Hello everyone, Maury Curtis Dunbar here with Painted Studios. We are working on hearts and flowers today. Sorry, I got a notification. Um, and we're going to keep working on fun Valentine's Day stuff this week. Uh, yeah, Valentine's Day is right around the corner. Uh, so if you want to do something special for your loved ones or one of your kids or something like that, let's jump on hearts and flowers and cutouts and let's do some fun, creative stuff. Hey, Tony, nice to see you here. All right, so yesterday we did this gorgeous heart where we did the stencil and then we did the highlights and the shadows. We're going to do some more of that today. Uh, and then we also did our mushrooms. Look how cute these came out. Look at our little mushrooms. Oh my gosh, they came out so cute. I love how these look. And they're all drilled and I just have to tie ribbons on them. And then here's our little kind of, I, you know, somebody said they were Pennsylvania Dutch looking. They have a little bit of Swedish into them. They have a lot of German, but look how cute those are. Oh my God, they're adorable. Now we have the cutouts here at the studio, so you can always purchase them. They're online and ready to be ordered. Um, some of the new cutouts, these new cutouts I explained before, they're rustic. These are cut out the way the original uh, yes, they are adorable. Hey, Linda, nice to see you. So the, the cutouts that I have for these shapes were done in the original style. These are not laser cut out. These are hand cut out on a bandsaw. They're hand sanded. They're slightly irregular. They're rustic. They're designed to be that way. These are exact, uh, as close as I can make them, exact le replicas of the ornaments that I used to get from Joel Cobb and incorporated as a child. This, And if you go online and want to order any of these, they are the Joel Cobb collection because this was done from uh, a very dear family friend who used to have a st shop who made these wonderful ornament shapes for us. And let me show you the originals. Okay. This is my original ornament from 1975. Yes, from 1975. This is the one we did this week. Look how cute they are. We've done the interpretations, and I just think they're adorable. Now, you know, I painted them, not the original person, so we're going to have, you know, some differences. But these can't, these are so much fun to do, and they were so easy. And, of course, you can do them any way you see fit. So you don't have to do them my way. They're the way. I do them because that's the emotional attachment to them for me. So, but I just think that that is the cutest interpretation for these. And of course, we'll be doing some more designs like this for Easter. We'll have some flowers and all kinds of stuff. And I'm going through all of my old collections to find all the old Joel Cobb items. And they are going to be listed on our website, both as blanks and created pieces. So you'll be able to purchase them painted or unpainted. Now, meanwhile, uh, we're gonna also, and we, we also did a couple of our little mason jars, but I haven't figured out the design I'm doing on them yet. So they're just painted pink. Uh, today, we're gonna work, we did this side. So today we're gonna work on this side. Now I got smart because I'm not always that bright. I polycrylicked this before I flip it over because when I work, I'm messy. So if I don't seal this up, I can get paint on this side and then it's a lot of work to get it off. If I have a coating of polycrylic on here, if I get a little paint from the other side on here, it's a lot easier to get off because I'm not gonna be going through my painted finish. If I had to sand, I'd just be lightly sanding off the polycrylic. All right, and then I, you know, I can do another coat on it, so it's no big deal. All right, we're gonna flip down for now. Let me, uh, let me, first of all, let me straighten out my camera. Forgive my hands if you see it in the frame because it was looking like it was gonna fall out of the tripod. And we're gonna turn on a secondary light. That is if it goes on. And I'm lying to you because it's already off. All right, so we're gonna use this one. This is our gorgeous peacock stencil created by uh, Renee Holder from Two Chatty Chicks Teaching Eclectic Creations. 
So she cuts these for us and we carry them. And so I thought, how darling are little lovebirds? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna center this like this. Now clearly, this design is not going to fit completely. Let's be honest. This shape, if I did this upside down, it would fit flawlessly, really nicely. I can't do that unless I wanna hang the heart upside down. So I'm going to go in it like, I think I, think I had had it figured out before. I was going to go and do it I wanted to put that right there. I had this all plotted and then I took it off to go and put some spray adhesive on here. And I just bumped it, so I'm so I'm so graceful. All right, so we've got that on. Ah, I got fuzz in my mouth too. Ah. And we're gonna continue to use the same paints that I mixed up before. So we have in here, the background on this is set coat red. The white is Set Coat Metallic Snow, which is a white metallic, but it's very, very low metallic, so you're not getting a huge, insane sheen on them. Um, and then I mixed this pink using the snow and the uh, Faux FX uh, French Red Faux Color. Not Faux Cream Color, Faux Color. They're two different colors. Even though they have the same name, Rouge Royale or French Red, um, the French red is very different from the other one. All right, so we're gonna take a stencil brush, make sure these are dry, because I washed them. Now, that's something to know. Do not use a wet stencil brush. Um, I watched somebody do this and I felt so badly for them. These brushes are made to be dipped in paint, then offloaded, and then dipped into another paint color. Because if you get this brush wet, it keeps the water all the way up to the ferrule. And then you come in here and apply it, and then you get wet, wet, wet stuff going in. It seeps everywhere. It makes a huge mess. So do not wash your stencil brush until you're ready. Now, if you do a ton of stenciling with brushes like this, um, Jennifer Ferguson shared a great tip. You take these brushes, you put a damp paper towel in a Ziploc baggie, shove the brush in it with the paint color still on it or at least offload it as much as possible, throw it in the baggie and it'll stay clean and fresh but not wet so that you can't use the brush. All right, so let's start over here with the pink. I dip, dipped a lot of paint on there. That's way too much paint. So I come over to the side, I offload a lot and then I come in and I swirl. I don't do this. A it hurts my hands. B, if I'm doing this, I can shove the bristles of the brush up under the stencil and screw up my uh, pattern. So this swirling, for the most part, I pounce when I have a heavy texture because then I'm a little more controlled and I pounce lightly. Most of the time I will swirl my paint on because I find I actually cover more distance faster and I don't have any problems with bleeding. Now, if I think this looks too thin when it starts to dry, because this will dry really super fast because I'm putting it on so thin, I'm not even gonna take my stencil off. I'll put a little more paint on it and then we'll move the stencil and adjust our pattern. I love this peacock. These are peacocks, but I think also, you know, it's Valentine's Day. They're also lovey-dovey, so they're sort of like peacock lovebirds. Let's get this all filled in. Shift it around so I can get the other side without sticking my hand in the paint over here. All right. 
So I've got the whole pattern done, but I think I've got some thinner spots over here and over here that I'm not gonna be happy with. So I'm gonna come back in with just a little more paint, make it a little more opaque. Not a lot because I still don't want it to bleed. I just want good coverage. Now, if your stencil is close to the, an, the edge of the plastic that it's cut into, your pattern's too close to the edge of the mylar, you might wanna put a piece of tape here so that you don't take the chance of overshooting the, the surface and accidentally um, putting paint where you don't want it. Okay, so let's pull our pattern off and look how pretty that came out. Oh, that came out so nicely. Now, I'm gonna turn this upside down to you, right side up to me, so I can see it. And then I can, I'm gonna test this to, to touch it with my finger lightly to make sure there's no paint coming off. Yep, I'm good. Let's put this here. Careful, I gotta get it on evenly. pretty that is there. Oh, that's so nice. Now, clearly, uh, I have pattern to deal with over here. So I've got these blank spots. I can leave them blank or I can come in and put a little more pattern in there. And normally what I want to do is shift this up so it doesn't look like I'm stepping on the pattern. Uh, just so it fills in the spot correctly. Because this doesn't have, this is a medallion stencil, so it does not have a specific repeat, meaning it's not it's not like an all-over wallpaper pattern, which would be very easy to repeat because would, there would be registration marks and stuff like that in here. Well, that's not what's in this, on this. So we're going to just adjust the pattern to fit my space the way I want it to. That'll do it. For something this small, I kind of want to have a little more pattern just to make sure it looks complete. Okay. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Let's get this side. I'm looking at my pattern on the other side to make sure I'm matching up fairly closely to what I have over here. Okay, that's close enough. So now I have all of my pattern laid in. It's very pretty. I like how that came out. Let me put that to the side and turn that around for you. Look how cute that is. And let me, um, because I know I'm gonna stick my hand in it where I just put that paint, I'm just gonna stick that towel over there because I will stick my hand in it and then smear it across this because that's what I do all the time. Let me take a look and see if I've missed any comments. Uh, 
Oh, you're so cute, Camilla. I'm as lovely as the stencil and as grateful. Well, if I'm as grateful as a stencil, that means I hang stiffly on a wall until I'm ready to be used up. So I guess that that's kind of the truth. <laughs> uh, I think that's funny. Uh, I entertain myself even if I don't entertain anybody else. That's my job, and I'm good at it. All right, so we're going to, because, uh, let's see, I need a little brush to work with because our design is kind of on the small side. So let me find, I have a million brushes sitting over here. So we're going to use this one, and we're going to work on highlights and shadows. Now, clearly, I have to create a light source. Now, if you've watched my last videos, I tend to choose 45-degree angle from my left because I'm left-handed and that's easy for me to visualize. I have a little more trouble sometimes doing it the other way. If I needed it to be on that side, um, I'd do it and I just rotate it until I got it the way I wanted it. But what we're doing is we're going to choose 45 degrees. So basically your light is coming in this direction. So every upper edge here will get a highlight and every lower edge will get a shadow. And let me uh, zoom in and we can talk about exactly, sh I can show you exactly what I mean. And of course I forgot a cup of water, but fortunately that's not a problem. I have water all around me. Keep a little water bottle all, always so that I can do stuff like this because I forget to fill a water cup. So I'm dipping into my white, um, I find that to do this kind of work, the consistency of my paint should be um, about that of creamy tomato soup made with water, Campbell's tomato soup made with water. I know that's a very specific description, but that's the closest description I got. Okay, so I'm gonna start highlighting. I don't know if I'm even on camera with what I'm doing, so let me shift this down. Um, I'm highlighting all of these top angles with the idea that the sun's coming this way. So all of the shadow, the highlights and shadows have to pre, uh, apply to the direction that I'm doing this in. So that means that all my, sh my highlights are gonna be on angles like this. They're not gonna be coming up on top of things this way because that means the light would be coming from the top down. If it's coming from the side, then your highlights are going to be on the side that the sun's coming in, and then your shadows will be what drops behind. And I do all of the little shapes. And I'm not looking for perfection. Again, these have a little bit of a rustic feel, even with these lovely stencils. final look on this is just sharp. I really like it. It's one of my favorite things to do. And I can sit here all night and do this. Now today I was going to do bring you over and we were going to work on the desk I had started. Don't worry, I'm still working on it. But I finished doing all of the repairs and put a coat of shellac on it. Or on most of it because I was going to discuss shellac with you all today. And then realized I'd forgotten to fill all the drawer pull holes because they're badly positioned for what I want to do. So it's all sitting back there with more wood put, uh, plastic in it. And, you know, I got to let it dry because I tried to sand it before I came on camera and it was still too wet. So stuff happens. We'll do this today instead. We'll do, we'll do hearts and romantic -y kind of things today. I love this. This looks so good when it's done. And the fact that this is, this white has just a little bit of metallic in it means that when a light hits it, it actually really acts like a highlight. Now, if you don't like little fussy, fiddly things like this, this is not going to make you happy. Me, I love this stuff. It makes me so happy to work on these things. 
I find it very, very, very relaxing. And when I get off camera, I'm gonna spend the rest of my time here, even though it'll be after closing. I'm gonna spend my e early evening here doing this because I find it very zen and it's been a hectic day. So this will float me into the evening and I'll be very relaxed and have a happy night's sleep, probably dreaming about highlights because when I do stuff like this too much, I actually do dream it, that I'm still doing it. So if you see, you, I, all of my highlights, again, going all in the same direction. Let's take this. I'm gonna take some of the red that I made for the shadows. Now this red looks like mud. It is set coat red mixed with some black um, because shadows aren't actually black and gray. They are a deeper color of whatever the background is that the shadow is cast onto. So we have a red background. We're gonna need a dark red shadow. So I'm just gonna show you how we lay that in. So I do the whole thing and then I review it to make sure I haven't missed anything to see if I, my shadow needs to, or highlight needs to be extended a little bit in a couple places. You always check those things. Let's get the last of these shadows dropped in over here. Oh, I like how this is gonna come out. This is pretty. There we go. I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch me do this all evening, because. You know, that's my, that's my happy spot. And not everybody loves sitting and watching somebody do this sort of thing, but I wanna give you this. This was a great lesson, a great bit of information that I was taught by Pierre Finkelstein, who if you're not familiar with him, is a very talented um, Trump Loy artist, grainer, marble, uh, marbleizer. Ugh. So he, t I took a trompe l'oeil class with him and this was a very clean technique that he taught and I love it. And it gives great results. Now, if I were doing it totally in a true trompe l'oeil style, my, my blending would be more subtle, my shading and highlights would be more subtle, but that's not how I'm doing this. That's not how I want to do this. I want to have it a little more rustic. Okay, so let's take a look at how that looks. You see how that pops the design? I pull it back a little bit. So you can see how that makes the design pop. I did the same thing with the tree on this side and it just makes that design pop, just to highlight. And all you're using is lighter and darker versions of the same thing. So it's very monochromatic, which makes it very easy to determine your colors. All right, let's flip up. Oops, a little flipped up a little too much. Oh, this machine just 
has its mind, a mind of its own. Let's see if I can twist it down. There we go. I appreciate you all popping by today. We're not doing a super long one. It <laughs> We're supposed to get a huge dump of snow tonight, and then the temperatures are dropping sub-zero. So uh, I have spent most of the day kind of winterizing around here, making sure we'll stay good and warm, and working on the desk. Tomorrow we'll be back. We'll be working on the desk. We'll discuss how all of the wood fill and everything else work that we did, and we're going to start painting the base color. I appreciate you all co coming by. I hope you all had a great evening. Stay warm. It's chilly out. And have a good evening, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.